Happy Thanksgiving. It is good to gather with you today, whether you are preparing pies or cranberry sauce or thawing that turkey still. Uh, we are excited to join in worship with you during this time. And we pray that your celebration um, is a great time, even if it might look a little different this year. Please join me in a time in a call to worship. This is a time for thanksgiving, a time to be mindful of the good that encircles us. Thank you, God, for all you have given. For friends and family to encourage and to care, and this community to walk in your ways. Thank you, God, for all you have given. For your beauty and creation and the earth which gives us food to share. Thank you, God, for all you have given. The seasons change, sunshine comes and goes, yet your loving care for us is eternal. Thank you, God, for all you have given. Please join us in this time of confession. Gracious Creator, you have given us so much. But too often, we take those gifts for granted. You call us to live in caring community. But too often, we replace our wants and needs first. You call us to share your gifts with the world around us. But we are worried that there may not be enough. For all the times when we mistreat and misuse your gifts, for all the times we assume that we get what we have by ourselves, forgive us and lead us back to the path of wisdom. God is a gracious giver. God is gracious in forgiveness. God calls us to new patterns and new life. We are a forgiven people. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you richly bless us with all that we need. 
bread from the earth and the bread of heaven, which gives life to the world. Grant us one more thing, grateful hearts to sing your praise in this world and the world to come. Amen. Hey kids, if you wanna get closer to the computer, um, I have something I wanna show you guys. One of the things that I like to do with my kids when they were little, as we would wait for Thanksgiving for people to come to our house, or maybe we were waiting for all the food to get cooked and ready to eat, uh, we had to have some projects to do as we waited. And so we would make these little turkey handprints. And so I just traced my hand like this, and then I cut it out, and I put some construction paper on here to make it some colorful feathers, but I bet you could make your turkey look even cooler than mine if you wanted to decorate all the feathers in lots of different ways. And so then on there, I wrote things that I am thankful for. And so I put food and friends and family and Jesus. And then in the middle here, I have a Bible verse. And that's Psalm 138, verse 1. And so maybe you guys want to write Psalm 138, verse 1 on your turkey. And that says, I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. So maybe if you guys are waiting uh, for people to come to your house or tomorrow as you're waiting to eat your meal together, you guys could make turkeys for people in your family. Maybe you trace out your hands and then you cut them out and everybody could have a turkey by their plate. And then maybe as you eat together, you could add things, what you're thankful for. I know it's been kind of a crazy year, and I think it's important for us to talk about all those things that we're thankful for because God keeps giving us good gifts all the time. And so let's say a prayer for those things that we're thankful for. Dear God, thank you for your gifts. Help us to share all of those gifts with our family and our friends and people around us. Thank you for loving us and caring for us. In your name we pray, amen. So glad that you are worshiping with us on this Thanksgiving Eve, Thanksgiving Day, whenever you've joined us. Our theme in this time has been taken all from St. Paul's letter to the church in Philippi. These words from the fourth chapter are especially appropriate and close to us tonight. St. Paul writes this, Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way my beloved. Tonight, as we are together in worship, we will hear from our one of our members who is willing to share part of her personal journey with us to bring these words of St. Paul to life. So I'm grateful to Nikki, who you'll hear from in a moment. Remember that whatever it is you're facing, God is present and calls us to support one another and to see anew how Jesus can heal and redeem and give hope. That's the message from St. Paul that leads us to thanksgiving and to joy. Hear these words. He goes on with this instruction for us. Rejoice. In the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I keep fighting voices. 
voices in my mind that say not enough Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. Nikki Shaddy. My husband Gary and I have been coming to St. Timothy's for almost two years now. Um, and tonight I would like to share with you some of my journey from hopelessness to joy. Dr. Charles Stanley has said, hopelessness is a miserable trap that blinds a believer from seeing the Lord. I would agree. You see, last year at this time, I felt forgotten and hopeless. For several months, I had been experiencing constant pain in my stomach. I could not eat or sleep. 
It got to the point of not being able to work or enjoy life. Doctors tried medications and ran a series of tests. I was in the emergency room twice. The medications didn't help with my symptoms, and each test showed nothing wrong. I prayed often for healing from the pain or the answer to my misery revealed in a test. Nothing. I felt so far from God, abandoned. During the last test, the doctors administered, my tone changed with God from begging to issuing this ultimatum. If this test doesn't reveal something, we are done. It came back normal. A few days later, I was hospitalized for planning to take my life. While there, a therapist asked if I would like to have a chaplain visit. I said no. The next day, I met Katie, a therapy dog. She was trained to come up to a sitting person and drape her front legs over your legs so you could give her a hug. As I embraced Katie, tears streamed down my face. I felt my heart open and the Holy Spirit fill me with his presence. I knew in that moment he was there with me, loving me even though I was a mess and despite of what I had said. On Katie's business card, I noticed a Psalm 37, verses 23 and 24. Curious, I asked my recreational therapist to look up that verse. From his phone, he read, The steps of a man are established by the Lord when he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be cast headlong, for the Lord upholds his hand. He asked if I would like a Bible. I said yes. As I stayed in the hospital, I read through the Psalms to find comfort, identifying with many who expressed fear, anger, and despair. I noticed the word salah, after some of the Psalms. I hadn't seen that in other Bibles I've read. I wondered what it meant. I asked Pastor Kathy when she came to visit me. She explained that this is the only word in the Bible that does not have a translation. It almost acts as a pause or a breath taken, rest, if you will. I wondered, is God telling me to rest? I don't understand. How? Anxiety is what made me ill, and depression, kind of like resting, has taken my will to live. That night, I turned to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 through 11. I had read Paul's words for the last several months, focused on the first half. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. This time, as I continued to read, words jumped off the page. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Rest. The blinders were off, and I wanted to live. Like Paul, I strive to rejoice in the Lord, even in hard times. Feel comfort in his power, knowing he is working on my behalf, even when I don't see it. Remember, he is God, not me, and surrender my anxiety to him. Trusting in his timing and plan for me. Keep my heart open to his unfoldings, so my heart attains peace. I believe that is resting in him. I've come to understand happiness is fleeting. It's based on what is happening in the moment, whereas joy is based on an internal assurance, independent of our outward circumstances. I can choose to overcome and live in hope and joy in spite of my disorder. It's not always easy, but I know that God is with me every step of the way. And I am grateful for that. 
Thank you. Thank you, Nikki, for sharing your story with us. Hear these closing words from St. Paul as a promise and an invitation for living our lives faithfully today. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your minds and your hearts in Christ Jesus. And finally, beloved, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing 
the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. My friends, as we give thanks on this day, we, one of the ways that we give thanks is through the worship of offering ourselves. So as we listen now to the bells um, bring us into the presence of God through this time of reflection, I invite you to, with grateful hearts, um, give what has been entrusted to you. So we give in grateful thanksgiving for all that God has given us, even in this upside down world where the gospel holds sway, we measure our wealth not by what we have, but by what we can give away. And so we pray together. Help us give generously in this offering to bless your church, your people, your creation. Amen. Now let us pray together. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We gather together in a time of prayer. Let us offer our prayers to God for the life of the world and for all God's people in their daily life and work. O oh God, the beginning and end of all things, in your providence and care you watch unceasingly over all creation. We offer our prayer that in us and in all your people, your will may be done according to your wise and loving purpose in Christ our Lord. Lord of all life, hear our prayer. We pray for all through whom we receive sustenance and life, for farmers and agricultural workers, for packers, distributors, and company boards, as you have so ordered our life that we depend upon each other. Enable us by your grace to seek the well-being of others before our own. Lord of all creation, 
Hear our prayer. We pray for all engaged in research to safeguard crops against disease and to produce abundant life among those who hunger and those whose lives are at risk. We especially pray for the research conducted to fight this virus facing us this day. Prosper the work of their hands and the searching of their minds, that their labors may be for the welfare of all. Lord of all wisdom, hear our prayer. We pray for governments and aid agencies in those areas of the world where there is disaster, drought, and starvation. By the grace of your Spirit, touch our hearts and the hearts of all who live in comfortable and plenty, and make us wise stewards of your gifts. Lord of all justice, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are ill, remembering especially those in hospitals and nursing homes and all who are known to them and all who care for them. Give skill and understanding and endurance to all who work for their well-being. Lord of all compassion, hear our prayer. We remember those who have died, whom we entrust to your eternal love and the hope of resurrection to new life. Lord of all peace, hear our prayer. We offer ourselves to your service, asking that by the Spirit at work in us, others may receive a rich harvest of love and joy and peace. Lord of all faithfulness, hear our prayer. God of grace, as you are ever at work in your creation, so fulfill your wise and loving purpose in us and in all for whom we pray, that with them and in all that you have made, your glory may be revealed and the whole earth give praise to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. St. Paul says it best. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, beloved. And may the blessing of God who creates and carries us, redeems and delivers us, and breathes new life into us be with you this day and always. May you know joy as you gather your hearts and minds together for thanksgiving in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.